Hello and welcome to the Intel FPGA training using the GTS Ethernet Intel FPGA hard IP. This training is designed to introduce you to some of the features and concepts when designing with the Ethernet hard IP found in GTS transceiver blocks. By the end of this training, you will be able to use the features of the hard IP to customize the hard IP for your specific design needs. You will also be able to correctly incorporate the GTS Ethernet Intel FPGA hard IP into your FPGA design. We will begin this training with a quick review of the GTS transceiver. Then we will look at the GTS hard IP in more detail. After an overview, we will look more closely at the architecture and then how the architecture is configured for Ethernet data paths. We will finish up this section by looking at the clocking and the reset structures. We will end the course by looking at the design flow when targeting the Ethernet hard IP. First, we will see how you can customize the hard IP for your particular solution, and then how you can make the appropriate connections to your application logic. So let's start with a review of the GTS transceivers. The GTS transceiver bank is the main building block of the transceiver. Each bank contains four PMA channels and four hard IPs, FEC, PCS, Ethernet MAC, and PCIe. The bank also has one system PLL and a reference clock network to provide reference clocks to the system PLL, as well as other PMA channel PLLs. The reference clock network spans across multiple banks to allow sharing of clocks. The number of GTS transceiver banks varies depending on the density of the FPGA and its package variants. As an example, this slide shows the GTS transceiver banks found in Agilex 5E series and D series devices, particularly in the B32A package. The dark gray square in the center of each diagram represents the smallest package. As you move out, a larger and lighter squares represent increasingly larger packages. The size of the FPGA members in that package are indicated by the numbers in blue, and the number of transceivers available in the package are shown with the numbers in red. Starting with the E-Series, shown on the left side, there is one bank for the smallest two family members. The 028 has three banks, one on the right side and two on the left side. The 043 has two banks on the right and two banks on the left side. The largest densities, the 052 and the 065, have three banks on each side. On the right side, we see the D-Series devices which start with four GTS transceiver banks, two on each side in the smallest three devices. The 052 has six banks, four on the right and two on the left. The largest density device has four banks on each side. This table shows the various configurations supported by the GTS transceiver bank, along with the GTS resources used and example protocols making use of that configuration. There are six configurations, Hardened PCIe, Hardened Ethernet, Hardened USB 3.1, PCS Direct, FEC Direct, and PMA Direct. The Ethernet configuration is highlighted here. As you can see, it uses the Ethernet MAC, the PCS, and the PMA. Use of the FEC is optional. In our next section, we will take a look at the GTS transceiver when the Ethernet MAC hard IP is enabled. The Ethernet hard IP configuration supports by 1 10G Ethernet. By 1 25G Ethernet is also supported in Agilex 5D series and E series Group A devices. The IP supports four core modes. First is full stack with the Ethernet MAC. The second is PCS Direct with optional FEC. This mode bypasses the MAC and allows you to connect your own 10G or 25G MAC. The last two modes are OTM and Flexi. For client interfaces, the MAC uses an Avalanche streaming interface. PCS Direct uses the Ethernet standard MII, and Flexi uses a PCS66 interface. Two types of FEC are supported, Fire Code 2112, 2080, and RS-528, 514. Finally, there are some additional Ethernet modes or features supported by the hard IP. First, Synchronous Ethernet Mode, or SyncE, is supported for synchronizing network resources. 
Precision Time Protocol, or PTP, in standard accuracy mode is also supported through soft logic in the FPGA fabric. Auto negotiation and link training can be enabled through the use of a separate auto negotiation and link training IP. This diagram shows the GTS data paths when the Ethernet hard IP is enabled. In both the receive path along the bottom and the transmit path along the top, you have the PMA and its interface, the optional FEC, the PCS, and the MAC. The interface FIFO in orange ensures successful transfers with the FPGA fabric containing any soft logic to which the data path is connected. At the end of the paths, you have the 10G or 25G Ethernet link on the left and the four supported interfaces into the FPGA fabric on the right. The Ethernet Mac is compatible with the IEEE 802.3-2018 standard and the 25G slash 50G Ethernet spec. For the transmit path, standard Ethernet functionality is available such as source MAC address insertion, transmit preamble, start and SFD insertion with optional pass-through to provide your own preamble, CRC calculation, transmit frame padding to the minimum 64 byte requirement, error truncation, Interpacket gap or IPG generation and insertion and PTP support. For the receive path, there is SFD and preamble checking and error reporting, preamble pass through, IPG removal, CRC checking and removal, and pad bytes removal. Many of these features are optional and can be enabled dynamically using control signals. The GTS PCS is compliant to IEEE 802.3 Clause 49. It contains support for 64B66 bean coding and decoding, scrambling and descrambling, and alignment insertion and detection. As mentioned before, two FEC modes are supported. First is Fire Code 2112-2080. This is compliant with IEEE 802.3 Base R. Clause 74. This code supports both 10G and 25G data rates. The second is RSFEC 528-514. This is compliant with IEEE 802.3 Clause 91 and supports 25G. While the fire code FEC reduces latency, the RSFEC produces a better bit error rate for random and burst errors. Two PLLs are needed when using the Ethernet hard IP. The receive path has a dedicated clock data recovery, or CDR PLL, for tracking the incoming data and extracting the embedded clock. For transmit operation, the GTS transceiver system PLL is required. This PLL drives the MAC, the PCS, and the FEC blocks, as well as some of the blocks in the receive path. Note the system PLL is primarily associated with the PCIe hard IP, so the PCIe hard IP must be disabled to use it to run Ethernet in that transceiver bank, or you must use a system PLL from a neighboring GTS transceiver bank. To use the system PLL, designers must instantiate the system PLL clock IP in their designs. This IP will be discussed in a bit more detail later in the presentation. This is the data path diagram from before, with the addition of the PLLs and clock routing. Here you can see the CDR in the receive PMA. While the data proceeds along the white arrows into the FPGA fabric, the extracted clock, shown in orange, drives the PM interface and is available for logic in the FPGA. The system PLL, shown in the center left, generates the clock for most of the blocks in the full duplex channel, including the FPGA fabric. Notice the example bit widths shown in white along the data paths. These values are set automatically during hard IP configuration based on the Ethernet mode, the blocks enabled, the core interface selected, and the PLL settings. Gearboxes are automatically enabled in the PMA interface and the interface at IFO, if needed, to handle width conversion. The 80-bit user interface width is a superset of the four supported interface types. Once a user interface type is chosen, the appropriate signals will be enabled through the IP. For resets, the hard IP has signal resets and five resets controlled by control registers. 
To manage these, the IP builds a reset controller using soft logic in the FPGA fabric. In addition, designers must instantiate a reset request sequencer IP in their designs. This IP will also be discussed in a bit more detail later in the presentation. Now that we have a better understanding of the GTS transceiver hardware when Ethernet is enabled, we will continue by looking at the design flow. The GTS Ethernet hard IP design flow is the same flow used with other Intel IP. First, customize the IP according to your application needs using the IP parameter editor. This includes configuring any other IP required by GTS transceivers. Next, you generate the IP files and instantiate the IP in your design. You can then simulate the design using simulation models generated by the IP tools. Lastly, constrain your design by using, for example, I.O. placement constraints and SDC timing constraints, and then compile your design and review its implementation. Here is a screen capture of the GTS Ethernet Intel Hard IP Parameter Editor. The first section is the general options, where you can set 10G versus 25G Ethernet modes, PLO frequencies, and number of IP instances. Below that, you will find the section to enable PTP support. The next section is to enable debug capabilities. With these options, you can enable support for the transceiver toolkit used for tuning transceiver analog settings and the Ethernet toolkit used for debugging Ethernet PHY and MAC operations. Near the bottom, you can enable or disable the optional FEC. Finally, at the very bottom, you will find the MAC section where you can enable and disable various options to configure the operation of the MAC, such as MAC frame size and 5LAN support. Like many Intel IP cores, the IP parameter editor can also generate an example design in Verilog and VHDL. The example design is a fully validated design for simulation and hardware testing. You can target a specific development kit with the design if available. After configuring the hard IP, there are three main interfaces to which you connect your application logic. The Transmit Mac Avalon Stringing Client Input Interface, the Receive Mac Avalon Stringing Client Output Interface, and the IP Status Signal Interface. Status signals provide some visibility into IP core operation. A flow control interface is also provided to monitor flow control events. Using the GTS Ethernet hard IP requires instantiating two additional IP in your design, the GTS System PLL Clock Intel FPGA IP and the GTS Reset Sequencer Intel FPGA IP. This diagram shows the clock connections between the Ethernet hard IP and the clock IP when a single hard IP instance is instantiated. Both IP require reference clock inputs. Input, iClock Ref, connected to the Ethernet hard IP and input reference clock, connected to the system PLL IP. The system PLL IP generates output clock, OClock PLL, which connects to the input, iClock Sys, on the Ethernet hard IP. A PLL lock signal also connects to the Ethernet hard IP to indicate when the PLL is locked to its reference. On the FPGA side, output clock signal, OClock PLL, drives both data path core interface FIFO clocks, iClock RX, and iClock TX. Again, this diagram shows the connections for a single instance. Please see Agilex 5 documentation resources cited at the end of this presentation for additional connection examples when multiple IP or protocols are used. This diagram shows the Ethernet hard IP connected to the reset sequencer IP. To connect the reset sequencer IP, simply connect the reset sequencer IO signals to their correspondingly named IO signals on the Ethernet IP. Input source RS request handles reset requests from the Ethernet hard IP. Output source RS grant indicates to the hard IP when the reset is granted. Output PMACU clock connects to all PMAs within a single bank that are enabled in your design. If you have multiple banks, then each bank must be connected to a separate output clock signal. Finally, your user logic connects to the input source RS priority signal of the reset sequencer. 
This signal indicates which one of the channels connected to a single reset sequencer IP is the priority channel. Only one of the IP connected to a single reset sequencer should set this to 1, all others should set it to 0. Again, this shows a single Ethernet hard IP being connected. Please refer to the documentation for more examples. GTS transceiver banks on each side of the FBGA must use a single reset sequencer. In other words, all IP being implemented on a single side of the FBGA must be connected in your design to a single reset sequencer. Thus, a maximum of two reset sequencers are allowed per device. This is illustrated in the diagram. In this example, we see an Agilex 5 device with three GTS transceiver banks on each side and one reset sequencer for each side as well. This is a block diagram of the GTS Ethernet hard IP with its various connections. The Ethernet hard IP is shown within the large dotted box. Everything within, but the dark blue box labeled HIP wrapper, is additional soft logic created to support the Ethernet Mac. The system PLL is connected at the top, and the reset sequencer IP is connected on the left. Your application data path connects to the MAC adapters in gray. Finally, the JTAG and AVMAM configuration interfaces provide access to IP registers for monitoring or debugging, either directly from your design or using Intel FPGA debug tools like the Transceiver Toolkit and the Ethernet Toolkit. Finally, some additional key guidelines. The Ethernet MAC requires the use of PMA channel CH2. PMA channel CH3 is also required in select devices, such as Agilex 5D series. The Ethernet hard IP supports a single port only. Multiple IP instantiations are required if your design implements multiple ports. If you want to pack a single GTS transceiver bank with multiple protocols, then system PLL sharing may be required. This comes with additional rules on how many system PLLs you might need or on the PLL frequencies that must be provided and generated. To verify your clocking strategy and understand GTS transceiver bank clock usage, use the GTS transceiver clocking and data path tool. Of course, refer to the device documentation for additional guidelines to ensure a successful implementation. Now, let's summarize what we've learned. As you have learned, the GTS Ethernet Intel FBGA Hard IP is a complete, customizable protocol stack, providing an optimal solution for many 10G and 25G Ethernet applications. For additional information, guidelines, and learning, please refer to the GTS Ethernet Intel FBGA Hard IP User Guide. For additional information on GTS transceiver bank usage in Agilex 5 devices, particularly if you want multiple protocols to share banks, please refer to the Intel Agilex 5, GTS Transceiver Architecture, and PMA and FEC DirectFi IP User Guide. Intel provides multiple avenues in which to learn about Intel FPGA products. There is the Intel FPGA YouTube channel, which contains 5-minute quick videos as well as longer, more in-depth training videos. There is the Intel FPGA training website, where you can access e-learning courses made up of narrated slides, presented in an interactive player. Lastly, you can also enroll in a live, instructor-led course presented virtually over the web. All instructor-led courses have hands-on exercises to practice the concepts you learn. If you need more assistance, you can view and post questions to the community forum, which is monitored by skilled Intel FPGA applications engineers. The Intel FBGA training team is always looking to improve our material. You can help by responding to a survey that will be emailed to your registration email address. We welcome any feedback you may have. This concludes our look at using the GTS Ethernet Intel FBGA hard IP. Thank you and have a good day.